Good morning, everyone. So last year, I showed off my Welsh Harlequin ducks and my Khaki Campbell ducks. That was about 10 months ago. These are the babies of those crosses between the Welsh Harlequins and the Khaki Campbells. If you remember correctly, we actually had a really poorly colored Khaki Campbell duck. And we also had some mallard striping in some of our Welsh Harlequins, which is a big no-no if you're trying to breed the standard here in Texas. But what I did notice is that the bill color and the feet color of the these three hatchlings has really improved dramatically. The coloring of this drake right here, he is gorgeously colored for a khaki Campbell drake. He does have some white coming in on the bottom. I am assuming that's from him being part Welsh Harlequin because our Welsh Harlequin drakes do have that really nice white down with kind of a chestnut brown over the top of it. I did notice that the girls definitely have more of a mallard color than most mallards that I've owned, except for they have black beaks and their feet are turning black right now. Now, these girls were hatched out in September, October, maybe later. So, they are not fully grown. They just started laying eggs this week. I only have two hens in this pen. And so far, we've gotten 12 eggs in six days. So, they're excellent layers. I would even say that their egg laying has improved. Um, I'm definitely going to have to remove some of our one of our drakes out of here because these girls are getting overbred really you need a good eight to ten hens per drake they're very active you can see one of our girls just laid an egg right here but most of our girl most of the time our girls lay their eggs inside of their pen and they're running off so all of this has to be clean this is a big reality check about ducks it's been less than a week i've and I do throw our plant matter in here, I let them eat what they want of it, and then I just rake it all out and throw it in the compost. So this is just a reality of what it's like to raise ducks. This is one, less than one day. I change their water out twice a day. So in this small pool, it's not working. Even with all of this grass, all of these plants are growing, they have a lot of really great things going on for them in here. It's still not enough. You can see our drakes fighting. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is first start by changing off their water because while a lot of people say ducks don't need water, personally, I think that they do. They use it to breed and also they really do well having a place to clean off. I noticed that they're happier. They're more productive. They let us get closer to them when they're in water. All things that I really enjoy. So... Right now, I'm going to kind of go under here so you'll see everybody freaking out. This actually started off as our rabbit. Well, it was our chicken coop when they were babies, but now it's kind of where our rabbits hang out. So you can see. Look at that. They're so pretty. So I'm just going to crawl under here, which is going to make me a mess and I don't care. But... Here's our secret hiding spot for our eggs, right in here. So while they do randomly lay, they're kind of hiding underneath the rabbit hutches and building their little nest. I had nest boxes in here for the girls previously. They did not use them, so it was pretty much pointless. So there's our little nest. I'm really excited. I'm not sure if the girls are going to incubate these eggs or not. But I do know that if not, I have an incubator inside and I definitely need to hatch out more ducklings before the season ends because, like I said, we only have two hens. So these ducks can be an excellent meat source. They are really fatty. Welsh Harlequin ducks, I made a video comparing the duck carcass to a Cornish cross and it didn't have as much meat, but the amount of yellow fat that were all over these ducks was just completely incredible i've never seen so much healthy fat on a duck before so if you're looking for a fatty protein source i think that that's a great option especially for stocks and bras now if you look out here 
these are all our IVC containers. We have 30 of these things. So what I'm going to do today, after I clean out their pen and water them, is I'm going to take these and I'm going to make a massive pen. I'm going to make a really big area. Our ducks don't fly. So these are four feet tall and I can put them together and they have a huge area to run around. And right now it's we're in a bit of a drought, but when it's rainy season, our backyard holds a ridiculous amount of water. And I mean a ridiculous amount. So that's gonna be really good for them to go ahead and play and everything else. And they can bathe, they can just have their fun. I may even put a small floating duck house in there just so they can kind of hang out. I know this is our Wells Fargo Glen video, but look at this guy. Also, time to clean out the rabbit pins. That is done every other day. These guys use a lot. So these rabbits, they don't just hang out in their cages all day. They actually get to, to get out and they run around, sometimes with the ducks, sometimes on their own. So that is a lot of fun. They really get to kind of explore. I don't like the idea of just keeping rabbits in the cage all the time. I think it's really important for them to get out and for them to kind of exercise. So if I get too close, my mama will start freaking out. But last night, I cleaned out the the duck house that has the rabbit cages in it completely. I pulled out all the cages, pulled out everything in there, cleaned out all the hay, and I found a nest of 20-something eggs that these girls had not been sitting on. And I didn't feel like it was good to eat them because it's 90 something degrees here in southeast texas so i gave them to my neighbor he's a good friend of ours to go ahead and put in his incubator he has lots of experience with chicken eggs i feel like he would do great hatching them he has had a piece of property where he keeps animals before and so i was like okay let me go ahead and make sure that these can get hatched and maybe do some good for somebody and then i come out here and there's mama and here and here, there's a little nest, and it has two eggs in it, and she's sitting on it. And I'm just like, woman, you've got to be kidding me, because you had 20-something eggs that you just buried, and you refused to sit on them. And the moment that I clean everything out and get rid of them, of course, she decides to sit on two eggs, and that's it. The frustrating life of, of owning poultry right there so i know it's really hard to see this is kind of the outside area of our coop there's some old fencing that my dad tore down that i've kind of made a trellis for my goji berries and on the inside of uh, my cucumbers i know it's nothing fancy but i built it with my husband and my kids and most of it i did by myself with the kids so i'm very proud of it i could care less what it looks like it's going to be beautiful trellis and so this is kind of the inside area of our coop. Um, it's built with plywood, so it's eight foot long and four feet wide. And I'm a little nervous with all this hay is what I cleaned out. I'm not wearing shoes and we do have snakes. So <laughs> I'm always kind of nervous because you never know. You never know. So here's our rabbits. And I just cleaned this out last night. And look, the ducks are such a mess. They're just kind of hanging out in here. I kind of showed them off early in this video, you know, they get to come out. Last night when I was cleaning everything, they were hanging out inside the house, jumping all over the couches. Each one of my boys has a rabbit, so this is my youngest son's rabbit. This is my middle son's rabbit, and this big girl over here is my oldest son's rabbit, and let me tell you, she is not friendly. She ended up getting angry at the other rabbit, so we had to separate them. She decided to jump off the back of the couch and land on my four-year-old daughter's face. So she has a little bit of scratching, so it's definitely going to be one of those bunnies that gets her time by herself. Um, she's really good size. I have, all three of my rabbits are Rexes, and I love them because they're known as the King's Rabbit, and they are the softest rabbits in the world. Uh, they're just so soft. Guys, she hates me. I don't know why. I've just, she's never been my biggest fan. She likes my oldest son. That's his baby, and uh, that's pretty much all she likes. She doesn't like other rabbits, and she doesn't like me. The original idea was to use her as breeding stock. Um, we used to show rabbits, so I really enjoy that. And my kids get to learn responsibility and live on them. But um, 
I'm not sure how that's going to work out because I'm covered in scratches from handling her. She scratched at my oldest son. I think just the hormone changes of becoming a, a grown woman is just not sitting well with her. And here's this guy. He's our sweetest butterscotch. He is so sweet. He loves to be loved. Um, he's also kind of hitting his rabbit puberty right now. And so he smells like a male rabbit for sure. He's a pretty baby. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's so sweet. And the chocolate one down here, um, she has a floppy ear, so I'm just not sure that we want to breed her. But she is my youngest son's rabbit, and he loves her. And she gets to come out and play and run around the duck coop and just have her fun. They get fresh vegetables from our garden, so... She'll probably just hang out here for the next 10 years and do nothing except for be pet and not like me because that seems to be the theme of the rabbits. It's really because I'm the caretaker, not the lover of animals. I do love the animals, but I don't really have time to sit down and spend quality time with them and love on them like all four of my kids do. Um, except for our dog. <laughs> he makes sure that I have time, whether it's in the middle of the night and he sneaks into my bed or I'm trying to drink my coffee and he comes over there and drinks it, and looks innocent in my lap. That's what basset hounds do, mischievous little creatures. Here is a better view of the nest I was talking about. She built a whole new nest down there, whereas all those other eggs were just being buried under the soil and left alone. Maybe that was on purpose, but I never saw her sitting on them, and I've had eggs go bad in the past from ducks building nests that they don't take care of or love or use. So there's that. Um, because I am a mom of four, and I'm also a college student, I don't have the time to come out and fill up a feeder every day. So I use this feeder. These are rabbit pellets. So, um, but this is not what their diet solely consists of. They get their hay. They get fresh vegetables from our garden. They get to get out. They get their dandelions. They get pretty much whatever they want. We try not to give them too many carrots, even though... They do love carrots because things like that are extremely fattening um, for a rabbit. And I personally don't want to end up with a diabetic rabbit. I personally don't want to end up with a sick rabbit um, because we're feeding them too many carrots, too much fruit. Uh, it's just not good for these little babies. So it's so hot. And I'm about to hook up a fan. You can kind of see up here, there's this wire. We have wire up top. It's open so that there's air can get through. There's predator wire along the bottom in these frames. But I also have a box fan and I'm actually going to plug it in, throw the, throw the cord through the thing, plug it in. And that way our rabbits stay nice and cool because it's hot. It's probably a good 20 degrees cooler out here. But when the summers reach over 100 degrees outside, 20 degrees doesn't matter to these bunnies. They're miserable. Um, this is our feeder for our ducks right now they're on a pellet nothing fancy but like I said they get a lot of my scraps from the garden I just pulled out all my brassicas the ducks get those so they come in here first they get all the old hay the vegetables anything that doesn't fare well anything that we leave on our counters too long sometimes just whatever I feel like giving them and they really love that and so they get to kind of enjoy everything and that's kind of our first step of composting. And then I pick it up and I throw it in our compost bin along with any urine or poop that come out of our ducks. So it kind of all works out. I'm trying to close this. Guys, it's really hard to do with a cell phone in one hand. Look at this coop. I showed the other day where I just cleaned it. I, I'm telling you, ducks are literally the messiest creatures I've ever met. So I am definitely going to be uh, right here, taking these containers right here and stacking them too high. And we decided to add fencing all along this area. So this area, we'll take this off of the duck coop right here and they'll just be able to come out and just hang out in this whole area. And during the summer, especially if it's hurricane season, this just fills up with a lot of water, so it's perfect for the ducks. They just kind of come out here and have their own pond to just hang out with and destroy and be happy. 
And the cool thing about these containers is that I can either fill them with water and try to use the cracky method to grow with, or I can just fill them with soil and grow inside of them. And so all of that fencing on the outside then becomes a trellis and it hides the duck area, but it also gives them a lot of area. So that's pretty much it. I thank you for joining me. I know it's nothing fancy or special, but I really kind of enjoy showing these guys off and kind of showing the realities of homesteading. It is not pretty. It really isn't. There are a lot of pretty things that go into it. You see our garden is pretty and everything else, but homesteading is a mess and it's exhausting, um, but it's worth it. It really is. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time.